In this example problem, we have chlorine, which has two isotopes shown in the table below, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. We're given the percent abundance of each isotope and also the atomic mass of those two isotopes. So using that data, how can we calculate the average atomic mass of chlorine? Now it turns out that there's a simple formula that we need to use. So the average atomic mass will be equal to the mass of the isotope times the percentage in its decimal form, plus the mass of the second isotope times the percentage. And if you have multiple isotopes, this formula can continue. But since we only have two, we're going to stop here. So the mass of the first isotope is 34.969 AMU, atomic mass units. Now the percentage is 75.76. We need to divide that number by 100, or you can move the decimal point two units to the left. So it becomes 0.7576. Now the mass of the second isotope, chlorine 35, I mean, not that one, but chlorine 37, it's 36.966 times the percentage as a decimal, which is 0.2424. So go ahead and type this in your calculator. 34.969 times 0.7576 and then plus 36.966 times 0.2424. You should get this answer, 35.453. And so this is the average atomic mass of chlorine. So this is the basic formula that you need to use in order to get the answer. Now let's move on to the next problem. Magnesium has three stable isotopes, magnesium-24, magnesium-25, and magnesium-26. Given the average atomic mass of magnesium, it's uh, 24.305, which isotope is most abundant? Would it be Mg24, Mg25, or Mg26? Now keep in mind this number is an average. It's the average atomic mass of the masses of these elements. So which number is closest to 24.305? The answer is 24. So because this particular isotope is closest to the average atomic mass, this one is most likely to be the most abundant isotope of magnesium. And it's just as simple as that. The isotope whose mass is closest to the average is usually the one that's going to be the most abundant isotope. Now here we have a longer problem. Iron metal has four stable isotopes as shown in the table below. Determine the average atomic mass of iron. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try this. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to work on it. By the way, for those of you who haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe to this channel. And whatever you do, don't forget to click on that notification bell. Otherwise, you may not receive any updates on new videos that I'm going to post in the future. So now let's get back to this lesson. So to calculate the average, we need to use this formula. So we have four stable isotopes. So we need to go up to M4, P4. Now the mass of the first isotope, that's 53.9396. And then we're going to multiply it by the percentage that corresponds to it. And don't forget to divide that number by 100. So that's going to be 0.05845. Now the mass of the second isotope is 55.9349. And let's multiply that by, if we divide that by 100, that becomes 
seven five four. Now for the next one, M3, it's going to be 56.9354 times the percentage, which is 0 0.02119. And finally, for the last one, it's 57.9333. And then if we divide this by 100, that's going to be 0 0.00282. So go ahead and type all of that into your scientific device. This might take me a while, so just uh, bear with me for one moment. And just be careful not to uh, mistype a number, because if you make a, a little mistake here, that changes the entire problem. So the answer that I got is 55.845. So that is the average atomic mass for iron metal in atomic mass units, which is equivalent to grams per mole. Now let's think about the number that we have. In the last example, we saw that the element or isotope that is most abundant is the one whose mass is closest to the average. So Fe56 is the most abundant isotope. 91.754 percent of iron metal consists of this isotope. And notice that the average is very close to Fe56 because it's the most abundant one there. And so you could see how that makes sense, particularly with this example and uh, the other example. So I'm going to stop here. That's it for this video. So now you know how to calculate the average atomic mass of an element simply by using this formula. So thanks for watching.